representing ISOA. Suzanne, thanks so much for joining us. And tell us a little bit about what ISOA is. So ISOA is a member organization. It is the Europe, Middle East, and Africa organization of um, satellite operators. Mm -hmm. And our organization includes 21 satellite operators, mm -hmm. as well as manufacturers and insurance brokers, and um, including members of the of regional and national um, satellite organizations. NIGECOMSAT is a member. Uh, RASCOMSAT is a member. So you've recently joined ITU's development sector. Tell us why you thought that was a good fit for the organization. Well, it's very important um, because the D sector members are very much in, in their sort of focus of who they um, are trying to pull together and to um, help be a catalyst for in terms of advancing development. Um, that's very much our market. So satellites have a reach into all areas of the globe. Their coverage by nature is global. And so that that's very much um, our target audience. And so we're very excited to have been able to, to join and become part of that conversation. You talk about the role of satellites. Do you see that changing in the future, evolving? To date, we've, we've had a strong role in the markets that the D sector is focused on. But we're expecting a lot of growth in the future, and uh, that will change the way we're able to address these markets. We're already in, uh, in these markets in terms of providing broadband connectivity, either where the services of terrestrial infrastructure don't reach, or um, in the service of uh, complementing terrestrial uh, infrastructure and supporting it. Um, sometimes di providing direct services to end users, um, but also as backhaul. So uh, backhaul to the networks that, that reach um, the folks on their mobile phones. There are a lot of areas that, that we expect to see expansion in in the future. Mobility is one. I think um, you'll now see more services on airplanes. Well, many of those services, uh, whether you'd like to be connected on airplanes or not, <laughs> Many of the services are provided by satellites, so that's a big growth sector. Um, the maritime sector, and so um, here in the Bahamas and, and in islands um, like the Bahamas, in islands in the Pacific, uh, maritime can be very uh, important, and so that sector is a sector that satellites are perfect for in terms of their global reach. Um, there's a lot of innovation coming, and flat panel antennas are going to make installation of, of satellite equipment very much easier on planes, on boats, but also on other types of um, mobility applications. So we have a, an exciting future, and um, we hope to share those innovations with um, the D sector so that those markets understand what the possibilities are for satellite, and they don't forget about the role that satellite is already playing in their infrastructure, in their um, digital infrastructure. So how has it been for you here at GSR 17? There are about 400 participants here, people from more than 80 countries around the world. How has it been? What's been your biggest takeaway so far? Hmm. Uh, the biggest takeaway is, um, again, as new members, what a great platform this is to understand what are the right now needs of these markets. And um, they can be from the very basic to how do I get your particular types of services to the um, more remote or the underserved portions of our market to very cutting edge things uh, such as cybersecurity, which once you get the networks out, um, there's still very real sort of issues, um, economic issues about how you fund infrastructure, but then cybersecurity is a very, very sort of uh, detailed technical issues. And so the benefit of D sector for the members and for us in understanding what problems we want to help our customers solve. Um, that's what we're, that's, that's the biggest takeaway. This is, this is a, a very good platform for um, ISOA. Okay, so there are one of the best practice guidelines that are under discussion here at GSR is the incentives that regulators and policymakers can put forward for affordable digital services. How are you all, how do you see that challenge? Um, affordability um, is about what it costs to bring the service into the, the country or, or barriers to entry. And so um, competition is really important. Um, all of us operators are strong competitors in the market, but we do understand that the, for the customers, for the nations in which our services operate, 
um, they're going to get the best service when they're fostering competition. And so this is um, as between members of a particular sector and as between different ways of delivering connectivity. So um, the more open the markets can be with respect to that, the more technology neutral. Um, we think that fosters um, our service and digital inclusion in general. Um, other things that have been barriers to entry um, and that are important to remove if, if markets are to get the full benefits of satellite services would be fees. Um, licensing fees can be um, calibrated in different ways, calculated in different ways. And one of the ways that we think works best is if they are cost-based. When they are not strictly link linked to the costs that governments incur in terms of resources for allowing a service in, when there's a, a, a disconnect, then the cost of bringing in a service or starting it, the barriers of entry can be high if the, if the fees are so high that they really don't bear a relation to really what it costs you to try to manage that service. Another issue that we've had is that we're talking about innovation and we're talking about, with any telecom service, bringing equipment into the country. Mm -hmm. It can be very difficult to bring that in if there's a disproportionate cost to importing equipment. So if you have a, a cost of importation that's equal to or greater than the cost of the equipment, obviously that's going to be a barrier to having a service take hold or even um, begin in the, in the first place. It's not unique to the satellite sector, but it is definitely one of our concerns. So have you had an opportunity to speak with um, operators and other people in the industry here at the conference? How have they been responding to your you know, inclusion into ITU? Well, I, I, I am hoping that um, they're excited about it. Um, so I wants to be able to describe the whole array of services that our members can offer. Um, some countries focus uh, more on what is very, very immediate, which is you know, how to get mobile phones into folks' hands. But that gets there by a variety of means, and, and the support that satellite provides indirectly to mobile, um, uh, to that end user service by their services to mobile network operators or even directly to um, internet service providers. Um, that's something that we are able to help communicate on behalf of all of our members. Each member has a slightly different project and a, a, a product and a slightly different approach to the market, but we're able to explain how our membership is part of the infrastructure that gets all digital services out to um, markets um, that are here in attendance of the D sector. So for example, we've talked here about digital financial inclusion, mm -hmm. just basically banking and the many ways that you can facilitate banking um, in cities and in remote areas using satellite services. So just an example. Mm, great. Well, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the symposium here. We're chatting with Suzanne Malloy representing ISOA. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you.